Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well today. So I wanted to come up here um, and talk about a blog. I haven't done a blog in a very long time. Um, I actually haven't done one since January. Look, I'm sorry, I've been doing school, work, uh, just a lot of different things, church of course. Um, but I have been able to go live a few times and um, give you all what was dropping in my spirit, what God was dealing with me and my heart and my time with him. And so um, today I actually was able to um, do a blog today and it is who is God to you? Who is God to you is what I'll be dealing with. And so like I normally do when I come up here to talk about a blog, I actually... Um, deal with exactly what's on the blog page so you can actually find it um and so what i'll do um is just read what is on my blog and of course i'll stop and i'll talk about it as i go um so who is god to you is the name of this blog and it says um god is so wonderful his character is uncanny he is all-knowing all-powerful faithful true just love and so much more and my question is, who is God to you right now? This question can seem rather silly to some, but there's a reason for the question. In life, you can face many challenges and obstacles, and sometimes people lose sight of who God is. Have you lost sight of who God is? No? Well, the question then becomes, well, how is your behavior? How is your thinking? What words are you using? The way we lead our lives, even in the trying times, is a reflection of who God is in the life of the believer. So one can believe in all the greatness of who God is, but at the same time, one can be unaware that they are not allowing God to be who he is in their lives. If you have lost your peace, your joy, your strength, or your hope, Reflect on this question. Who is God to you? Is God your everything? Is God your peace? Is God your refuge in the most troubling time of your life? This should be evident, the answer to these questions. But instead, the devil wants you to believe that you are trusting God even though you are worrying. He wants you to believe that you are living in expectations even though everything that comes out of your mouth shows a lack of hope. The devil wants you to believe that you do have faith in God for your miracle, even though you are sitting in depression. Nevertheless, today you can start new. Today can be a new day for you. Today you can come to the realization within yourself that maybe I have not been trusting God even when I know his character is that he is faithful, that he is all powerful, that he is loving, that he has a plan for my life, or that he desires a close relationship with me. But start new today. Allow God to be that father to you. Allow God to be that peace for you. Allow God to be that strength for you. Allow God to be that confident for you. Allow God to be that love that you need. Allow God to show his power to turn things around for the better. 1 John 5, 14 through 15 reads, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So I want to encourage you today, even through that scripture, that you have to know that if you're asking God and you're praying to God and you're giving petitions to him that are in line with his will, that he is hearing you. And not only that he is hearing you, but he is going to allow it to come to pass, but it's in his timing. But in the midst or while you're waiting, don't give up. Don't fret. Don't allow worry to creep in. Don't allow doubt to creep in. So one thing you have to do is change your thinking. When an evil thought comes, don't accept it. 
but instead denounce those seeds of doubt, worry, fear that the devil wants to take, wants you to take hold of. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity at captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So any seed that is not of God, that the enemy is putting in your ear, that's placing in your mind. Remember, the mind is the battleground. Anything that he is placing in your mind, you have to choose not to accept it. And don't stay there. Don't dwell in that place of seeds that are from the enemy. Then you have to change the way you are speaking. The seeds of doubt, worry, fear, hopelessness, or helplessness should never be let out of your mouth. This is an indication that you are, in fact, holding on to God. You're looking to God. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Colossians 3 and 7, 17 says, And whatsoever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And then Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So instead of speaking the things that the enemy is planting in your mind, you're releasing those out of your mouth. Instead, choose to release the word of God in the situations. If you can reflect back to Jesus, even in the wilderness, when the enemy came to him with all of these different things that he was saying, God came back to him. Jesus replied to him with the word of God. That's what we have to be able to do. We can't begin to speak out those negative things. We can't be begin to release those into our lives. But we have to cast down those thoughts and begin to speak the word of God over our lives. To begin to decree and declare what God is saying. So I just wanted to come up here and encourage you all today. And the question is, who is God to you? Who is God to you? If you know that God is faithful, are you living like you know he is faithful? If you know that God is all powerful, are you believing that God can turn things around? Are you living believing or are you living doubting and worrying and filled with fear and filled with anger and filled with bitterness? Instead, choose to really live with God. Choose to really trust and depend on him. Choose to really have faith in him and that he is at work in your life. He said, I, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So I just wanted to come up here and encourage you today. If you find yourself worrying, if you find yourself doubting, if you find yourself frustrated and angry, if you find yourself just depressed about different things, it's time to ask yourself this question. If you know that God is your refuge, if you know that God is your strength, let him be that right now in your life. All right, start new. All right, so I'm just going to say a word of prayer, which is what I do when I um, finish talking about one of my blogs. So I'm just going to go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your kindness toward us. God, we thank you that we know, God, that you have a perfect plan, God, and you have a, your perfect will in store for our lives, and it's already at work in our lives. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that will listen today, tomorrow, or whenever, God. I pray for them now, God. And I pray, God, that those who know your character, God, will apply your character, and God, that it will stir up their faith and be able to trust you to work things out in their favor, be able to trust you, God, that even though they don't understand maybe the situation and the circumstances that they may be faced with or the hard things that they're dealing with, God, but they would know, God, that you're the God who is faithful, that you're the God who is all powerful, that you're the God who is all knowing, that you're the God that has the greater plan. So God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for them now, God, that they would trust you again, that they would believe you again. Again. God, that they will build up their faith in you and build up their courage to stand on your word. God, in the name of Jesus, God, give us a heart and a hunger and a thirst, God, after you. Because, God, you said that we would be filled. 
So God, we thank you now for what you're going to do in the lives of that person today. That person that was facing doubt. That person that was dealing with fear and worry and anxiety and sadness and depression. God, that person, God, that, that burden would lift up, lift up off of them, God. And that they would rest in you, God. And rest in knowing, God, that you have everything under control. That the words that they speak would show their faith. That the way that they think would show that they're believing and trusting in you. God, we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you all.